Hey, Sherry, look. It's Gina and Jen. Let's find out what they're doing. Okay. This is our indoor walk with Annette and Sherry at lunchtime. Hello, lady. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. 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 How are you? Great. What are you doing? We are feeding our worm bin. What are you feeding worms? Well, worms are vegans. Um, they really like squash. This is their favorite. So really? Their favorite is squash? Their favorite is That's squash. That's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're also feeding them, this is some um, herbal tea, leftovers of herbal tea. Oh, let me look in there. What do you have? Oh, the rest of this, this is, um, got banana peel, pepper that was started to go bad, old blueberries, and I think that, oh, apple corns. So like Gina oh. said, the worms are vegan, so really what they love to eat are fruits and vegetables, the herbal tea, they like tea bags, um, coffee grounds, but they really enjoy um, fruits and vegetables. So this worm bin, uh, where would you keep this? Well, these worms are actually pretty sensitive to the cold, and they like to live in an environment that's between 55 and 85 degrees. And so this worm bin lives in our office, but worm bins can also live in classrooms or inside of your home. In your wow. home? Yes. Wow. I could have worms at home. Another pet. Oh. Hooray! <laughs> They're yes. the easiest pet that you'll ever have. I, I bet. They I eat your food. They eat your food scraps. They eat your trash. Uh, you never have to take them for a walk. Um, Sounds great. Yeah. So as you notice, we're putting all of the food underneath this paper, and for this style worm bin, that's what we. That's where we like to put the food scraps underneath the paper, and then we cover it back up. Just regular paper. shredded paper. I see newspaper, paper bags, things mm -hmm. like that. Yep, newspaper is the best. Um, office paper can also be used, but um, that's best to put in the recycling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but probably not uh, the junk mail envelopes I get with those uh, plastic on um, uh, plastic windows, yeah. right? That's no. that's nothing not glossy. The... No magazines. Um, nothing glossy okay. and nothing plastic like that. No. Because in here we have worm bins and they can't eat plastic. Or we have worms and they're not really fond of plastic. What kind of worms? Earthworms? They're not earthworms. They're red wiggler worms. Um, Icenia fetida is their Latin name. Oh, fancy. Um, here's one <laughs> oh, right here. Oh, we have one. Oh, let's see. Oh, they're pretty hello. small. Oh, they are very small. Let's see if we can improve the focus there. All right. Oh, he is. He's, he's looking up and saying hello. And how many would you say are in this bin right now? Do you have any guess? Oh, hundreds. Hundreds, really? if not a thousand worms. Really? That many? And that, and this is just a bin you can get at uh, the hardware, hardware, store. hardware store or something yep. like that. Okay. It's about two cubic feet, and it can support about one pound of worms. And another fun fact about the worms is they can eat half their weight in food scraps a day. So a pound of worms can process half a pound of food scraps a day. Wow, so this really would mean we could reduce the amount of garbage going in the landfills. Yes, definitely. And not only are you reducing what you're throwing in the trash and that's going to the landfills, but you're also producing something that if you're a gardener, or if you know any gardeners, is really uh, gold to gardeners. Um, vermicompost, um, which is what Gina has in her hand right now, is a really nutrient-rich amendment for your house plants or your street trees or your vegetable garden or your flower flower gardens, anything like that. A little bit goes a long way, and um, it's really some of the best compost that you can find. Too interesting. So how does one get started? Um, one can get started by attending one of our workshops here at Queen's Botanical Garden. Um, we're having a workshop next Thursday, February 28th, and we offer workshops year-round, um, which you can find out about on our website, www.queensbotanical.org. <laughs> Thank you for putting in our website. <laughs> so this is a fairly decent-sized bin, and I see there's another one next to it. Oh. Um, are these 
similar? Are they the same kind? Of They're the thing? same. And the same kind of concept as you see on the top of this lid, and I don't know if you can see it as well with this lid, but they all they both have holes on the top, oh, and that's that. to allow air to get into the bin for the worms. And these are basically the same type of bin, same same thing. We're gonna feed it underneath the paper, um, keep it full of shredded newspaper. Um, but the only difference is this one is smaller, and also this one is um, kind of clear. And this is good for in um, classrooms, um, where there's any sort of education happening. We have these so that people can see them, see, see in the side, see how the, the compost is um, beginning to pile up. Um, but it's definitely not necessary to have a clear bin. It's just um, for educational purposes it's nice to have. That's great. And that one you said is a good size for a classroom or a mm -hmm. this is one a person, size. two person mm -hmm. apartment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This oh, is a good that's size. Great. That's yeah. good to know because, yeah, that bigger one, I have a tiny apartment and, or a, a tiny kitchen. Mm -hmm. And well, I don't, where would, you I, keep where would I keep yeah, that? But the little one, I could manage that. Mm -hmm. And you can put it underneath the sink or in a closet. It doesn't need to be out in the open. As okay. long as there are holes in the top and air can get into the bin. Um, for the worms to breathe. Then. They don't need the light. They do not need the light. It's preferable to not have light. Very good. Wonderful. And we're going to feed them? All right. Feed now, them I remember more. talking with you a few weeks back uh, at the outdoor compost bin, and I'm imagining the same thing is true here as you told us out there, and that is that as long as we put our foodstuffs down at the compost level and cover it, with the shredded paper, mm -hmm. there will be no odor, except the lovely odor of earth. That yes. is true. That is true. Yes. Again, in, in this bin, that's why we always cover it with all the food um, with um, newspaper. We always pull up the paper, put the food underneath, and then replace the paper and add more and try to always have our bin full of newspaper so that any sort of odors are um, are not a problem and um, generally we don't have any odors with this kind of system you just need to keep it full of dry shredded newspaper and shredding it is essential we have mechanically shredded paper you can also just tear paper by hand um, less than one inch strips so that paper can be fluffed up and air can get around to get down to the worms well that's great thank you so much for showing this to us and uh, hopefully lots of people will be able to attend the workshops that are up and coming, either the one in February or others that are in the future. Yeah. Thank you for another Thank nice you. lunchtime visit. Thank, Thank you for you. coming. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye worms.